Hi, Sam here with jbugs.com. In our last video, we disassembled and rebuilt our Ventwing assemblies. And now that they are, we can get them installed along with the rest of the parts on our doors. Before we get them back in place though, we need to get our doors back to the body. That starts with the door hinges opened up in line with the door, and we carefully set the door hinges in place at the front of the door jamb. Then, while propping up the door with a foot, a few door jam screws are threaded into the top and the bottom hinges to make sure the door doesn't fall off or scratch any paint. Taping off the door jam opening beforehand can help protect the paint while getting the door fit. The remaining screws are threaded in and with the door hinges in the centered position, as they are adjustable, an upper and lower screw are tightened. We close the door carefully to check the alignment of the door gaps and the body lines. The hinges are adjusted in or out and up or down as necessary to get the gaps and more importantly get the body lines as even as possible. Tweaking the top of the door one way or the other while holding the bottom of the door can help to even out the fit of the door to the body. Once we're happy with the fit of the door, all the door jam screws are tightened and then we install the door hinge screw caps at the top and the bottom door jam holes. And while we're here, we'll install the door check rod seal as well. Next, we'll get the door latch mechanism and release rod installed. So, after making sure the latch is in the closed position, we install the mechanism into the door. The lever rod is inserted through the parallelogram opening, set into the mechanism, and the spring clip slides in place to hold it. Then the mechanism is set into the opening at the back of the door. We line up the door lock pull rod with the opening at the top of the door and the three screws for the mechanism are threaded in and tightened down. We install the door lock pull collar into the door and then thread on the door lock pull to test the operation. To help prevent rattles, we glue in a piece of foam around and behind the lever rod before installing the door release lever. The lever is bolted in place and another piece of foam is glued in place as a sound and wind buffer around the lever. Next, we screw in the door catch at the B pillar and tighten the screws just enough to hold it in place so we can test the alignment. After some testing and adjustment, we get the catch in place and hold the door closed in line with the body. And once we do, we can open the door and tighten the screws fully. We'll temporarily install the outside door handle since we'll be pulling it off later when we color sand the car so that we can test the operation of the latch and the key. The next piece to go back on our door is the new window regulator. So after spraying some silicone spray lube into the regulator track, the regulator is set into the door from the bottom. Once the window crank post is in place at its opening, we install the two bolts to hold the regulator there. Then we make sure the track and the upright brace are both set behind the window opening closer to the inside of the car. And we install the bolt at the upright brace at the regulator there. We won't install the bolt at the bottom until the glass is in place. A new check rod stop is slid over the check rod, the rod is inserted into the guide, and the assembly is bolted into place in the door jam. We can't connect the rod into the mount at the A pillar until we get the door seal installed, so we'll get to it next. We orient the door seal with the three corners and install the top back and the bottom front corner first. We work the rubber into place between the two pulling the rubber a bit to thin it out before pressing it into place and working along the seal into the channel works best. A trim tool can be used afterward to make sure the seal is set properly. Once the seal is in past the door check rod, the check rod is attached to the mount at the body with a pin and the clip can be installed. Back to the door seal working along the bottom, we'll demonstrate a common mistake that is made when installing the seals. If you were simply to install the seal from one corner to the next, when you get to the end, you'll have too much rubber. So install the corners first, and then work the rubber into place from there. A trim tool helps to finish up pressing the rubber into place. The same method applies for the back of the door seal, but here we first stretch the seal to get it in place behind the door latch, and then the remaining portions at the top and bottom are installed. Note that we don't use weather strip adhesive. You can, but we recommend getting the seal installed first, then glue the seal in in sections. Otherwise, things could get very messy. 
Another thing we'll note is that the German door seals have a powdery coating and appear gray in color. The coating helps the door seals wear in, so don't wash or scrub it off. Next, we'll install the felt channel brace with the felt channel clip already installed. There is another clip at the top edge that will hold the brace at the top side. So after the brace is set in place into the door, we tap it in place so that it lines up with the channel at the top and bolt it in place at the bottom. Then we drop the roll-up glass into the door opening from the top opening and gently set it in place at the bottom of the door. Now we'll install the outside scraper and after carefully getting it into the window opening at the bottom, we work the back and upper edges into the door and then we finish by pressing the bottom edge and the clips there in place into the door. The remainder of the outside scraper is held in place with five felt channel clips, so they are installed by setting them in place at the three holes at the top and the two holes at the back, and the clips are seated with a mallet and a punch. The next thing to go into the door will be the vent wing assembly after we install a new felt channel. So we run a bead of weather strip adhesive down the back edge of the vent wing, we trim the new felt channel to length, and apply glue down the back of it as well. Once the glue is tacked up, we press the felt channel into place, and then we run the back edge of a pair of side cutters up the felt channel to seat it in place. Now we can set the vent wing assembly into the door, bottom edge first, and then tap it forward into the door opening and install the lower bolt. The screw at the top of the vent wing is installed, and then we can install the long felt channel through the window opening at the back of the door. The felt channel is shaped to the bend at the top of the door and butted up against the vent wing window at the front edge. From there, we work the felt into the groove at the window opening, pressing into the felt channel clips, working from the vent wing window across the top of the door. We further shape the felt to the bend at the door, down the back side, and into the felt channel brace inside the door. Now we can move the roll-up window into place into the felt channels and push it all the way up. Then we roll the window regulator up with the handle we've temporarily installed up to the bottom of the sash at the bottom of the glass. We make sure the holes for the glass are lined up with the punch and then we line up and bolt in the regulator at the bottom of the door. The two bolts that hold the regulator to the window sash are installed and we roll down the window so we can install the inside scraper. While rolling down the window, we can see a common issue that occurs with new scrapers. The rubber gets stuck to the glass and pulls inside the door. So, once the window is down, we spray the rubber with silicone spray lube and roll the window up and down again to spread the silicone out. It will take a bit for the scrapers to wear in, but the silicone spray will definitely help. The inside scraper is the last piece to install, and after it's set into place on the window opening, a trim tool is used behind each of the clips to help snap it into place. Some more silicone spray on the rubber scrapers keeps them from sticking to the glass, and we roll the window up and down to make sure everything operates as it should. With that, we can close the door on this video. The assembly is the same for both doors, and with them complete, we can get on to our next step, installing the padded dashboard. Thanks for watching. Make sure to click the like button below. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, and when you need parts or accessories for your vintage VW, head over to jbugs.com.